Greetings, Jay Stone, Cap and Ball Fanatic Channel. Hey, I put that shooting sequence on there simply because I wanted to show you and me what it looks like when Cap and Ball revolvers go bang because I have all of the supplies necessary to do it. What am I really talking about here? Percussion caps. It's no secret we're in a big percussion cap shortage. I did a video on this a while back and I'll link it in the notes. But tonight, I think it's time we start thinking about taking matters into our own hands and making our own percussion caps here at home. So I've had to do it and I've, I got out my cap maker. I turned on my cameras and I'm gonna take you through the simple process of making percussion caps here at home in a way that is inexpensive, kind of fun, and uh, makes you feel like you're really sort of in charge of your cap and ball revolver hobby. So stay with us. And at the end, I'm gonna test the caps that we make on this video and see if they go bang. All right, so what I have before you is the number 10 percussion cap making kit. I'm just gonna, I've already stamped out a couple. I'm gonna make a few of these. Um, and let me show you how simple it is. All you need is the press. You take those apart. You just cut down some, this is a natural light can. You cut them down into some strips that you can manage. It's really simple, but you want to not pinch your fingers. There's a slit right there. You take it and you slide it all the way into the top, into the back. You slide the part with the teeth on it right in there. You take your hammer. Tap it a couple times, bring it out, and then the cap is up in here. You just turn it over, and there comes the cap. So let's do that again. Just slide that. Sorry about the camera angles and the lighting. I'm trying to do the best I can here with what I got to work with. Take that, slide in the tin, put the cap there, tap it a couple times, turn it over. And there's your cap. And I can get, you can get, a, as you can imagine, you can get a whole bunch out of a little piece of uh, three inch by six inch um, tin can. Some people use other materials. Uh, uh, these have worked fine for me. On this table is everything that you need to make mix primer, fill the caps, and put on your sealer, which for me is a liquid hairspray that I. I may have pilfered from my wife's cabinet. And then I have this book here only because I want a good solid place to set these on after I filled them. I've got a pair of tweezers to hold them and I've got wooden match sticks to tamp them down when we get when we get them up here. Now they give you four bags of of uh, of uh, of primer mixture. They give you great instructions on how many from each one goes into a mixture here in this glass bowl. And they recommend that you use glass or plastic so we don't get any sparks. And this little spoon that they give you, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's two, there's cups on each side. One is a large cup and one is a small cup. We're gonna use the large cup to fill, to put two of these and one of these in, and a small cup to put one of these and one of these. Uh, I, people have speculated on what these mixtures are. I'm not a chemist, so I don't really care. I'm not gonna play with it. I'm gonna follow the instructions entirely. Um, and then what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna mix this up, bring it to an even color gray, and, uh, and then we'll, 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 go to, we'll go to filling. So let's look. The first one we do is this L2. We give two, we give two large scoops. And we, so we reach in there I'm all thumbs sometimes. We reach in there, get a large scoop, drop it down inside. We reach in there. We get another large scoop. It helps to put the scoop into the powder instead of the bottom end. We drop it down in the middle of that. Set that aside. Now we have large scoop, one. So this charcoal-like, probably is charcoal of some sort, uh, substance. We're going to take one scoop of that. We're gonna drop it right on top of the other pile that we've created. Now we come over here and that says S on it. So that's one small scoop. So we flip the scooper over to the small scoop. We get down in there, find ourselves a, 
a full small scoop of that stuff and we drop it right on top of the other pile we've started and then this last one in the little bag it's one small scoop cds i keep whenever i say one small scoop i keep wanting to say one small scoop for mankind <laughs> and this is the stuff i've heard people speculate about what it is it's really fine it's a lot like sugar texture and we drop it right on top of there now that we've got those in there we just take the end of our scoop you can see that i have them dropped in there it's a pile and what we want to do is we want to get all the lumps out of this stuff and we want to mix this together um, and i pound it a little bit we want to mix this together until we get a, a texture that is a, a consistent gray color um, we get that all down mix it together and then i'll just take it and sort of put it down in the corner like that i don't know if you can see down in there okay but that's a steady gray mixture that little bit of powder and that's going to make you i don't know 15 or 20 of these things if you if you load it right so now what these recommendations say is is that in each one of these caps you use the small scoop end and you do about a third of the small scoop end and so this is where it gets a little tricky so what i typically do is i pick up a cap a piece of tin cap in a pair of tweezers and i hold it back oops and i try not to drop it <laughs> but i'll hold it back over the uh, this is a, you got to have some nimble fingers here and for somebody my age who's got arthritis this can be a little tricky you take the small scoop and then i just go down and you bring some up and you see it like that and that's about about half so i'm just going to knock it down a little bit and knock it down a little bit and i'm going to put as close to or less than a third as i possibly can fill up about a third of that cup and then i'm just going to take it and pour it in there let that settle in there and then i'm going to take it and set it right over on my book i'm going to take another cap I'll go down in here and i'm going to get it down to about a third some always falls out so a third's a good start i want it I, my experience is a little lighter than what than the third makes them fit your the nipples of your revolver better and they go off better because if you put too much in there they won't seat down tight on your nipple so when the hammer hits it it's like there's a pad between the impact point of your hammer face and the uh in the powder so you want to just have a, enough in there to make it spark and and i think a little less than a third is probably the way to go so you can see it's a little tedious if you got fat fingers or arthritic fingers like i do this can be a little tricky so i've mixed up 12 of these um and remember this is a 24-hour process so i've gone through the first stages i put these 12 together it's taken me, if I wasn't video recording, if I was just doing this, I, it was, it's taken me half an hour, maybe a little less than that. Now what I have done is taken some liquid hairspray and I've put it in the cap here. There's my 12 caps. I hope you can see them there. And now I have a little eyedropper that you use to give uh, medicine to cats. Works really well. And what we're gonna do now is, is we're gonna go over each one of these caps and we're gonna put a drop or so from the eyedropper in each one of these right on top of the powder then we're going to let them set for five minutes and then we're going to we're going to tamp them down with the uh with a wooden match and then when we're done with that we set them up on the shelf and let them dry for 24 hours and then tomorrow comes and hopefully they'll go bang so let me get in here and get some of this in the eyedropper doesn't take very much and then we're going to go right around one at a time And we're going to put a drop of this stuff in there. The hairspray works as a as a sealer. So when you carry these in a in a cap tin, or you put them in your pocket, or your shooting box, or your Impossibles bag, the stuff won't fall out. They say it won't in the instructions. They say it's got a natural sealer or acetone will do it. But I have found that acetone doesn't work as well it still fall they still fall out after a little bit of time 
Now, I've made a lot of caps over the time, and I've kept these. I had some caps for a year in a tin one time, and they mostly worked. So there we go. Put that back down there. And now we're going to wait five minutes, let it settle a little bit, and then we're going to come back, and I'll show you about tamping them down and then setting them out for drying. All right, back after five or ten minutes of letting the the uh, hairspray soak in these a little bit, and they're still wet. They're going to be wet. But now you take your matchstick, right, and I hold it with a – I put them on this white paper so you can see them better. And I hold it with a tweezers, and I just tamp it down as best I can. Now, my experience with these has been pretty good. I've seen people online say that they go off just like manufactured caps do, and that's not been my experience. Um, you're going to have a few that are duds, and you're going to have a few that are misfires and all of that, and we'll test these out hopefully in this video at some point. But, but you know what? It's just part of the process to me, and quite frankly, I'd rather go through all of this and have a few misfires because it's nothing to replace a cap, right? It takes seconds. I'd rather replace a cap and take a couple seconds and have that distraction than I would be not to shoot at all because I can't find any percussion caps. Like in everything else in life, the beauty of this is, is that we all have choices. I always think about that scene from... Uh, the Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman when Clint Eastwood's holding the shotgun on Gene Hackman in the bar. He pulls the shotgun triggers and it goes click and Gene Hackman goes, misfire. And it's just part of what we do. So anyways, when I'm done with this, I'm going to take these and leave them here and I'm going to set them up on a shelf in a dry spot and I'm going to let them dry for around 24 hours or more. Uh, they won't fire before that. They need to dry all the way through. All right, here's our homemade caps. Let's see if they go off. These guns are not loaded. That one wasn't so good. There we go. So there you have it. You saw the percussion cap making process. It's a little tedious. Depends on your interest. It takes some time. But once you get the hang of it, you can make quite a few caps. But what I like about that is, is that for about 60 bucks, you can make up to, in a, in a few tin cans that you're going to recycle anyways or throw away, you can make up to 2,000 caps. I think for my money and my time, this is the best way to go about it. I think it's also a very reliable way to go about it. But just remember, nothing's perfect. Even our manufactured caps aren't perfect. And if you make 100 of these things, you're going to have a certain percentage of them that don't go off or, that, or that, that don't set off your charge. Don't worry about it. Flip it off the, uh, the revolver and put another one back on and get to having some fun. So anyways, I think, it's, I think it's always good when we can take our matters into our own hands and stop worrying about what the manufacturers are going to do and what the economy is going to do and when this is going to come back around. If you like shooting cap and ball revolvers as much as I do, then find yourself a cap maker and some primer and get to making some caps and get out to the range and have yourself a blast. I know the weather has gotten bad here all of a sudden, which is why I'm not out on the range right now, but it's supposed to break next week. So we'll be back out on the range shooting some of our cap and ball revolvers. So appreciate you sticking around. And before you go, before you uh, stop watching YouTube tonight, tune on this video and learn some more about the percussion cap shortage. And we'll see you on down the road the next time.